Hello everyone. Look, we have a clear view of the ocean today. Look at this panorama. Let's see if you can get, I'm just making sure you get this. All the way around. So today, um, I'm not sure if we're finishing up, but we're reading this book from the 1700s by uh, Father, this priest, Jean-Pierre de Cassade. He was um, Society of Jesus, SJ, so I think that's Jesuit. Um, anyway, uh, but it was from the 1700s. I like, I prefer oftentimes reading things from the very, the very far past. Um, one of the commentaries I love is from the 1100s, Blessed Theophylact. That's, you know, it's, you can get it yourself. It's translated from the Greek from the 1100s. And it's a really, ugh, if everyone would just teach the Gospels this way, I think so many more people would understand the real essence of Christianity. But I welcome all faiths. So um, all of us, it's important to learn how to be in this present moment, how to be, um, look, in peace, right? How to, um, how to keep practicing this is a discipline it's like a spiritual discipline to keep practicing surrendering everything to god because there's no way we can't carry all this stuff oh i have Leia's with us Lele. <laughs> anyway uh so let's just begin there's the sun and then the, the moon is pretty cool today it's, it, i can't ever get the moon on this thing uh, it's up there. <sighs> All right. So we have a stand so we can just look at the ocean for a while. Here we go. Um... Hold on, I'm trying to get an angle better of the ocean instead of just the dry brush. There we go. Uh-oh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's okay. I'm, I know, I was just trying to tell, show you in, in case you saw me. My dog's right here. She'll, she's little, but she'll start barking. <laughs> yeah, see? Oh, man. <laughs> She's tiny. Hello. <laughs> you got it, Leia. Okay. Usually there aren't people down here. I'm below, like, where they take all their pictures. All right. Let's go. So right now we're in um, the letters. This is the letters from the 10th French English edition. Uh, we finished the one book we were on and then I just printed some letters and I don't know, we'll just, okay. So this is, this is the second part, first book. A letter from, um, letters, okay, I'll show you. Letters on the practice of the, of abandonment to divine providence. <sighs> Letter one, um, Okay, it says, on the esteem for and love of this virtue of, oh good, of the virtue of learning how to keep surrendering everything to God. You know, if we took on all the news in the world, if we knew all of the horrible things that were happening and all of the good things that were happening and all of the people in need, you know, um, this is one of the reasons I think that we're called in the Old Testament and the New to give 10% of our earnings back. It's like... 
it when you're doing something right now in this present moment that if everyone in the world was doing that it's like everyone would be taken care of you know oh, we have to read plato and read about some utopian society we don't it's like start doing your part jesus said that take the log out of your own eye and this isn't i'm not talking as like a pharisaical you know the religious spirit i'm not at all saying that i'm saying when you do that you surrender and it feels like you're not going to have enough to live on and then um you just have to keep entrusting everything to god and it um it changes your perspective on time on money on people on what you ought to be spending your money on it just changes everything um okay we'll see letter one happiness and peace of abandonment to sister elizabeth bossier de montreux see this is translated from the french so anyway um the happiness and peace of a soul entirely abandoned to god from Perpignan, that's where he's writing it from, 1732. Okay, or I don't know what Perpignan start, stands for, but anyway. Madame and very dear sister, like sister in Christ, right? He would minister to a bunch of nuns. Hold on, I have a bunch of flies on me, but uh, not whatever they are. There's, there's, I'm at a different spot. All right, um, anyway. Mm you do well to give yourself up entirely and almost solely to the excellent practice of an absolute abandonment to the will of god in this lies for you all perfection this is the straight path leading most quickly and surely to a profound unchangeable peace it is also a secure safeguard to preserve this peace in the depths of the soul even in the midst of the most violent storms far from doing it harm these storms will serve infallibly not only to increase its merits, but also to strengthen more and more this union of the created will with the divine will. Right? We are created. God is divine. And so, um, there's this part of us, like St. Augustine observed, this is just an observation by saying, our hearts are restless until they repose in thee, O God. Or um, Plato saying, everything we, were, everything we learn is just remembering. Come here, Leah. <sighs> I have to surrender so much just to be here. <laughs> I'm like, there's, I, I took wilderness survival classes, so I'm like, okay, there's deer poop here. There's um, bunny excrement there's my dog there's there's all these there's people behind me and you know whatever and flies on me whatever just there's so many these are just things but look i get to be in nature i get to be this is this is my quote job right now even though i'm not being paid for it yet um it's just i trust god to pay me it's like um you know what do we call it? A worker is worth her wages or no, uh, gifts will make room or, um, oh, that's what it is on the, on the way up here. I was getting, oh yeah, thy kingdom come. That's why we're doing this. That's why you're taking time out to do it too. You know, God wants to equip you, but, um, and he's just using me to do so. Thy kingdom come is saying, uh, I, I, I'm not here to promote my kingdom. I'm here to promote your kingdom <laughs> on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom is love. It's perfect union. It's presence. It's quiet. I mean, it can be loud, but it's, it's beauty. But yeah. I got to tie her up to my leg or something. Okay. Good girl. Good girl. Okay. Um.
Thanks, Leia. Take care of all of them. She's getting the flowers. They were never here before. I wonder if it's because I'm sitting in this place. All right. Far from doing it harm, these storms will serve infallibly. These storms in life will, will serve, right? Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walking in the fire. They had to go through the fire in that immediate intense fire, and Jesus was in there with them. And they came out not smelling like smoke. Now I understand why people talk about that. They say, you're, God will take you through your own fires from the evil people in this world that will, you know, the people that choose to do evil and side with evil. They're not all evil people. They're just being, they're being lied to and seduced into the evil path. And then they, they have hard hearts and, and harm others. Can you see this field? There's a field right over here people playing on it. Okay. And this lies, uh, good brother. Get them all, girl. I, I don't, okay. There. Um, far from doing it harm, these storms will serve infallibly, not only to increase its merits, but also to strengthen more and more this union of the created will with the divine will. And it is this which renders the peace of the soul unchangeable. Let's see, Leia. I might move. All right. Oh, what happiness, what grace, what a certainty as to the life to come and what unalterable peace does she possess who belongs to God alone? who has no being out of God, who has no other support, no other help, no other hope but God alone. What a beautiful letter one of your sisters has written to me on this subject. She says that for a whole month, this one thought consoled, sustained, and encouraged her so strongly that instead of reluctance to practice this virtue, she felt it a, sort of, a source of peace and of inexplicable joy. It seemed to her that God took the place of director, you know, a spiritual director. We have spiritual directors. When my spiritual director is like out of town or, you know, um, for the summer, sometimes she takes off. It's like, she's like, well, God will be your spiritual director. And he shows up in like so many ways that she was showing up. I used to meet with her once a week to go over, you know, um, what I was contemplating with God. And anyway, so he turns out to be this director, a spiritual director. Hold on. Uh, it seemed to her that God took the place of director, a friend, and willed to be all things to her himself, right? He wanted to be those things. The more we become accustomed to these thoughts, the more settled will be our peace and fixed and the fixed determination to seek God only and to unite our will to his is in the best sense of the word that goodwill to which peace has been promised, right? It's like I met Elliot, my friend Elliot, after the, the movie Goodwill Hunting. It comes up a lot every time I see, oftentimes when I see the word goodwill, it's like you're looking for good for for a good will a real a true genuine good will um and and not people that have been compromised and i don't i won't go into that it's like there's just so much coming out about that i don't know i i try not to date my videos whatsoever hold on all right come here Leah. let's do this okay Let's see if they're not over here. It could be because of all the stuff that is here. Come on, Leah. I'll go back over. Leah, come on. Leah, come on. Oh, come on. I don't want her to be in the brambles either. All right, Let's see if this works. Yeah. 
yeah, you can still see the ocean. I'm enough by the camera. There's definitely a bunch of... Okay. I just left my bag and stuff there, but... Okay, so, um, so, okay, his is in the best sense of the word, that goodwill to which peace has been promised. How can created things trouble a soul which neither desires nor fears them? You know, I saw a giant coyote on the way here and I was just like, well, I want to stay in peace. I picked up Leia for a while. <laughs> It was at the beginning of the trail, so that's a long time ago. But they're out here. Um, you know, I don't always bring her with me. Um, and they come out usually at dusk, and this is not dusk. You see the sun's high up in the sky. Anyway, but this is like the coyotes in life and the Goliath that, that um, David had to face. And then, you know, he said with his sheep, he had to face all these... Um, lions and stuff before or whatever take the sheep out of the lion's mouth like that's not yours that's god's sheep that he's entrusting to me and so get out of here and so he knew from all those times that god would protect him from goliath who was making fun of the 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 god of israel you know in their armies <laughs> he's like he's like he said to him i'm gonna i'm gonna kill you today he said that to i don't want to say these words on youtube but he said goliath in this story you know in the story that really happened said to david before he was king anointed or maybe he was already anointed i can't remember um i don't think so i think that was before that but um he said um maybe i can't remember uh he said no actually i'm gonna i'm gonna cut i'm gonna cut your, your head off today and he didn't even have a sword he came out there without a sword and so this is life this is so cool all right um how can created things trouble a soul which neither desires nor fears them let us endeavor to arrive at this state and then our peace will be firmly established let us imitate the holy archbishop of cambrai who said of himself I endure all until the worst comes to the worst. And then finally, I find peace and complete self-renunciation. All right, so we have the worst. The worst. Ugh. Anyway, from, um, hold on, hopefully. All right, so this is, um, it said don't, oh, this is it, okay. Letter two. All right, that was the end of that letter. Letter two. Welcome, welcome. I do hope you're doing well. I wish you so much love right now in your life. Thanks for joining me on this. On this. I was feeling discouraged, and then I saw um, <laughs> the, the people that my mom and I listen to morning prayer every morning, this, this one, these two different priests, read a psalm and an old testament and a new te new testament and for months now we've been we've been going to their site maybe six months and i looked back at because i was trying to find them one night live and they weren't on and um it was like two people had viewed <laughs> that my mom and i are one because we're watching together but it's like two people had viewed what they've been doing like a 25 minutes 30 minutes of prayer every morning every night every morning every night over and over and it was just like encouraging to me because it's not about the numbers right now it's not it's not about the numbers ever because guess what i know i am that one person with my mom watching this my mom is older you know and i, I don't know how long she gets to be here on this earth and like I treasure every moment of reading the scriptures and praying with her and these people are affording that to us out of their service they don't have to be recording that for us and we get to um it's beautiful it's really beautiful I've left the link before um it's called St. James um just ask me if you want the link again I don't always like I don't anyway I, I, you know, I like sharing resources, but I don't want them to go to the wrong people. That's all. Um, I know y'all are the right people, but um, anyway. 
what is that? <sighs> I'm hearing the song out of my league. <laughs> and more than just a dream. More than just a dream. Um, anyway, we, we're, the right, we're the right people because Christ is in us and he makes us the right people. That's all. We're carrying the gold of the king. And so it doesn't matter if we're this beautiful princess or prince looking on the outside or we're just a smelly mule. We get to carry the gold of Christ, the king, in us and, and be that on this earth. Okay, this, so it's um, letter two, a short way to perfection. The abandonment, I think we read this in the, in the last one, but that's okay. This abandonment is the shortest way to arrive at perfect love and perfection. Your letter, my dear sister, put me in mind of the gospel where we see a young man approaching our Lord to ask him the way to eternal life. Our good master replied that he should, he should keep the commandments. And when the young man answered, that he had kept them faithfully from his youth. Our Lord said, if you would be perfect, go sell all that you have and give to the poor and come follow me. Your request is exactly the same as that of the young man. You want me to show you the shortest and surest way to attain perfection, which is the fullness of, of life eternal. If I did not know you as I do, I should answer that the first thing to do is to keep your rule, because the rule is to every religious the only sure road to perfection. This is the rule of life that I was just mentioning that I didn't know he was going to talk about. It's like um, my mom and I choosing, even if we don't feel like it, to keep praying for people, to keep listening to a psalm and an Old Testament and the New Testament, you know, putting ourselves in, in the Gospels and in the readings about God, reminding ourselves to be faithful. And you pray for peace every day or you pray for all the authorities in the in politics you, you pray for. You pray for everybody in the whole world, all conditions of mankind. You lift up your requests and your your woes and whatever before God. It's like you follow this or you, you know, I come out here on this day and I choose, this is part of my rule of life right now to give back in this way, to enter into these these letters, to educate us on, on true Christian things by people that died as Christians, as, you know, as... um confirmed in the faith not as these people who come and fall away and then we find out all this stuff about them you know there's been enough time since the 1700s and the 1100s for us to find out about these people that i read and that and and the gospels the people we know that james like died upside down crucified upside down you know for the for his faith because he was a disciple of christ and he knew it was true he saw jesus the risen jesus right if it wasn't true these people would not have died for it. They were fishermen. They could have gone back to fishing. They did do that after the death, you know, after the death of Christ. It shows the resurrection right there because they went back to fishing. And then when they saw Jesus, they went back to teaching the gospel and, the, and what Jesus came to teach us here. That, like what C.S. Lewis says in Mere Christianity, we get a second chance. We get a second chance to, to begin again with God, to... Um, you know, Adam and Eve had this opportunity to have life and they, they got seduced and were lied to and they brought death to us. And Jesus brings us back to this thing called life, Z-O-E in Greek, Zoe. And Zoe, right? It's not bios life. We get a new life. And so God is remaking us into this new man. And so um, new, you know, new, new being. Lewis says it's the difference is like, a regular horse turning into a flying horse or a, a statue turning to a real man, a real woman. Here, Layla. What is that? Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. All right. So he would say this to her, but I'm sure he knows that she does follow her rule of life. That's, it's not rules. It's a, it's a habit. It's just like, you know, I just released yesterday. You'll, you'll probably, I hope to get this out to, to well, anyway, I just released this, um, um, this video on, um, 10 things men can stop doing 
to increase their confidence and responsibility and self-ledness or whatever in life. And, and I was reviewing a secular person and the things that he came up with, but he came up with this rule of life that's really disciplined that, that um, benefits you if you are a Christian as well. It's like, don't go to um, any of those sites or anything that's going to drain your energy where you're giving free energy away to scantily clad women, you know, it was for men, you know, he came up with that. I, I was just relaying it as a woman. I was really happy to hear a man speaking so boldly on these things and how it drains your life. Well, it drains you from your work life, but you know, I care about your eternal soul and, and those kinds of things, the things that he was talking about, like take responsibility for your physical body. Like you want to be able to, if God calls you to, to, you know, walk up this mountain to, to be able to come up here and do something like this. Like y y your life doesn't have to be surrounded about your physical body. I won't go do that whole video right now. I'm just saying it's like, he brought up things like that. Like, um, you know, be disciplined in your food and your body and your, in your activities in your, you know, sleep in your whatever, you know, showing up for your wife protecting your children um of course you know finding a way to provide but you know not not letting that consume you um i can't remember all his points because i recorded a few weeks ago and then um just uploaded it yesterday but um anyway or w when when i did you know i don't it's not always okay anyway okay so So if I did not know you as I do, I, I, would, I should answer that the first thing to do is to keep your rule, right? That's one of the rule. That's a rule, a rule of life, an order. Because the rule is to every religious, the, you know, monks and stuff. They get up, they do their morning prayers, and you don't ever want to do it rotely. Like um, a Billie Holiday, every time she'd sing a song, she sing it in the present moment a different way. That's why it was so captivating. It was just like, it was expressing what was happening in that moment, not just singing a song over and over again. Don't eat that, Leia. That's gross. Come on. That's so gross. Come back. Leia. Ah, gross. I hope I, God protect Leia from getting sick from that. That's not food, Leia. That's gross. I, I won't say. Okay. Um, anyway. Come here, girl. Come here. I'm so sorry. Go get your food. Go get you. She begged to come with me. All right. Um, of course, yesterday I just took her to the ocean and we watched the sunset. So she didn't know if she was going to that or this. So. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so, for, so for the religious, the only sure road to perfection. But I am aware that you have kept it with scrupulous fidelity for a long time. Therefore, what you wish to learn at present is by what particular practice a religious, you know, and, and religion just means relinking yourself to God. And so these are people, they have given their lives over to that practice, but you can do it in your everyday life. Just ask God, how, how, how do I surrender everything to you and still show up at work, show up? I have kids, you know, that's my full-time job right now is like, how do I keep showing up and drive them to places and sign them up for the things and, you know, help them with school and all the stuff, you know, and do the laundry and whatever, all the stuff that we're meant that we can do to serve these people and still remain a hundred percent connected to you, God. How do I do that in the midst of, and, and as a psychologist too, you know, I have that other job too. Anyway. Um, but I've, I'm aware you've kept it with scrupulous, scrupulous fidelity for a long time. Therefore, what you wish to learn at present is by what particular practice a religious who faithfully fulfills all her duties can arrive at a high degree of sanctity. To this question, my dear sister, my reply will be exactly similar to that of our good master of Jesus, right? Masters capitalized, that's Jesus. 
If you would be perfect, divest yourself of your own views, of all high notions of yourself, of studied elegance, of all reflection of your own conduct, in fine, of all that you can call your own and give yourself up without reserve and forever to the guidance and good pleasure of God. Abandonment, yes, entire blind absolute abandonment. This for soul's circumstance as you are is the height and whole of perfection because perfection consists in perfect love and because for you the practice of abandonment is another word for the practice of pure love it's just practicing pure love that's why i always wear that heart necklace and i show it you know when i'm not in my workout clothes it's just a heart it's like we're all learning just I even looked up in uh, the word righteousness in Hebrew the other day in a verse I was reading. I looked up, oh, what does this mean in, in Hebrew again, you know? And it was saying normal, ordinary conduct. <laughs> but it was it was like the ordinary, the way that we were created by God to actually be. It would be ordinary if we walked in the garden and talked with God and had an intimate relationship with him. And we um, we weren't, we weren't, we hadn't fallen yet, right? This is what Christ brings us back to this relationship. And another word for the practice of pure love. It is true that love, even the purest, does not exclude in the soul the desire of its own salvation and perfection. But it is equally incontestable that the nearer the soul approaches the perfect purity of divine love, the more its thoughts and reflections are turned away from itself and fixed on the infinite goodness of God. This divine goodness does not compel us to repudiate the happiness it destines for us. For it has every right, doubtless, to be loved for itself alone without any reflection on our own interest, without us being interested in union with God and the love that develops in us and the peace and all the stuff that happens as a result of being in union with God. You know, it, we, it, we ought to love God just because we're created to do so. We're created out of God and we're created to love God, not because God is any kind of narcissist. God is not. God doesn't need anything. God is the uncreated before all things and we are created and so he's not in need of any of us and yet here we are here we are and he gives us God is beyond he and she divine love gives us this opportunity to love God which is the thing that makes us most happy you know, there's, there's a prayer from St. Ignatius of Loyola, another saint who was sanctified, you know, made into a saint. And he would pray the suchupe. It's like, Lord, I give you all my memories, all my understanding, all my liberties, my entire will. All I ask is your love. You have given all to me, so I give it all back to you. you have, all I ask is your love and your grace, you know, because we want to know we're forgiven for everything so we can forgive everyone else and not hold any bitterness or heart feelings and that we're loved you know that this love that we give to god will be requited and it always is watch and see so i was like you know all these horrible memories were coming up that for me yesterday was the anniversary of my friend elliot's death and anyway over 20 years ago he died but anyway, it feels like yesterday that I found out. But, uh, so all these horrible memories can come back from all these horrible things. And it's just like, oh, wait, I gave God all my memories. I don't have to go into those. I don't have to, you don't have to shove any of everything down. I feel I could cry I can, whatever comes up, you know, I can get angry that he's not here anymore for, you know, dumb reasons. He's not here anymore, right? Um, because his death is an open case still, so they don't know what happened. But I just, I was like, oh, thank God, I can give all my memories to God and just ask him to wash through those. And I'm saying this only for you, not because I need to talk about my past, 
But for you, you can give God all your memories and ask him to wash through them, take them through the wash, you know. It's not brainwashing. It's stop getting your identity from your mind. Oh, Leah, I'm sorry, hold on. Good girl, good girl. There's some burrs that caught in her tail. Because usually I carry her to this part. Ah! Leia, Leia, stop. Sorry, honey. It's okay. I, I'll have to sit on the couch and do this when you get back. Oh, it's, oh I'm sorry, Leia. Sorry, girl. Okay. Come here, honey. I'm sorry. All right. Let's go. So, um, oh, here, perfect. Here it goes. To the perfect purity of divine love, the more its thoughts and reflections are turned away from itself and fixed on the infinite goodness of God. This divine goodness does not compel us to repudiate the happiness it destines for us, but it has every right, doubtless, to be loved for itself alone without any reflection on our own interest. This love, which includes the love of ourselves, but is independent of it, is what theologians call pure love. And all agree in recognizing that the soul is so much the more perfect according to the measure in which it habitually acts under the influence of this love and the extent to which it divests itself of all self-seeking. And at any rate, unless its own interests are subordinated to the interests of God. Therefore, total renunciation. No way, I don't. Uh, without reserve or limit, has no thought of self-interest. It thinks but of God, of his good pleasure, of his wishes, of his glory. It neither knows nor desires to know aught else. Far from making its own interest a reason for its love, the soul, truly detached, generously accepts and embraces all that tends to annihilate them. Darkness, uncertainty, weakness, humiliations. Believe me, you've seen some on, on these videos, so many humiliations I've had to go through myself. But Christ was showing me on this past Sunday at church, or right before church. It's like he faced the humiliation of being God and being put on a cross be, out of love for us. And so how can any of, you know, someone ghosting me or ignoring me or, you know, divorcing me or whatever else happens, right? Me losing our first child. Um, I also lost it on the day of Elliot's death a year later to a miscarriage. And so it's like any of those humiliations and things that I have to go through or any of us has to go through. They don't compare it to God coming down here to love us, who crucified him, who put him on the cross, right? Who they, they stripped him of his clothes and, and said, oh, since you're a prophet, prophesy who just punched you as they, as they blinded him. It says that in the gospels, you can read it. This happened. They took the cat of nine tails and whipped it across his back. Like this is utter humiliation. And so nothing that I face in this life, even when they, t if they, if someone takes my life, it's only one life, you know, it's, I'm not, I'm not, God coming down here. God became man so that man could become God. All right. He's, he's making us into God. And so if he lets that happen in my life, you know, you don't run towards that, but you know, whatever it's, 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 a, oh, it's reminding me. I didn't know this song before because I couldn't sing Christian songs for the longest time. I mean, we sang hymns at the church I was at for years, but this church I go to now sings, they called it, it said, it's an easy surrender. It's an easy surrender. When you just give everything to God, you know, and they're not reading this book from the 1700s with us. Um, some of them know my channel now, but anyway, it only makes it better and it's an easy surrender. I forget all the words to that. Like maybe I'll learn it. I've only sing it like once or twice, I think. <sighs> okay. So Um, it, it neither knows nor desires to know aught else. 
far from making its own interest a reason for its love, the soul truly detached generously accepts and embraces all that tends to annihilate them, darkness, uncertainty, weakness, humiliations. All these things give it pleasure directly. It perceives that it so pleases the beloved. You know, whatever pleases God, if, that, if God wants this to happen to me because I didn't know how to have better boundaries or it didn't, or just because someone chooses to be cruel and God wants to use their cruelty to speak into their hearts from someone that chooses to keep loving them regardless. You know, not, not keep inviting them to torture you, but, you know, just keeps forgiving them and loving them and tell them how loved they are. You know, if that's, if that's how God wants to use me or you or anybody, so be it. It's, it's way better than our own agendas. Like, thy kingdom come, not mine. You know, those people think you're foolish to keep loving them or you think they think, you know, whatever. I don't know. It doesn't matter what they think. You just keep following. Aye, aye, Captain. Follow the orders of, of God and ask God to keep giving you discernment how to do so. <clears throat> I'm just saying, like, we cancel all assignments of the enemy. We stand ten toes down for the will of God. That's what we do. We keep giving back everything that we've got and more and more because you have you have the resurrection power of jesus christ in you come holy spirit fill us right now we pray we give you this hour thank you we give it from the beginning to now we give every one of these for every video i've ever made we give to you god we give this series to you this abandonment to divine providence thank you for leading me to this book thank you for leading people to this video so that they could watch and interact and learn this with you we pray fill us with your holy spirit soften our hearts help us to love our right help us to abandon everything to you we pray in jesus name amen all these things give it pleasure directly it perceives that it so pleases the beloved with a capital b the our beloved i am my beloved and he is mine his banner over me is love that's in song of solomon because the pleasure and satisfaction of its beloved from all its own pleasures and satisfaction, form all its own pleasures and satisfaction, right? It neither has a will, nor a desire, nor a life of its own, but is completely lost, engulfed, and as it were, annihilated, annihilated in the depth of the dark abyss of the will of him who love, whom it loves. I could tell you of souls known to me, Hmm. All right, God's just having me pray for certain people. Someone named Luke, Lucas, and Pearson. Anyway, I'll just keep it private, but God, I, I pray, um, I just pray for all these people, all every person connected to each person here every person that you're going to interact with the more you surrender and let god just flow like this gold like the king's gold that you're carrying you just turn into this gold it says so in um in in all these verses that say you will be refined seven times like gold in the fire and it says in daniel 12 2 1 and 3 or 2 and 3 it says um and those in the uh, in this end time will will rise out of the dust of the earth and wake up and you will shine like the firmament of heaven, like the stars in the heaven. That's like gold, right? Anyway. And that why do you think they put the halos around the saints? Because the, this glory is shining through them. God is compared sometimes to the sun. Anyway. It neither has a will nor a desire nor a life of its own, but is completely lost, engulfed, and as it were annihilated in the depth of the dark abyss of the will of him whom it loves. I could tell you of souls known to me, which have, having crossed this terrible pass of total abandonment and thrown themselves into the deep abyss of the incomprehensible will of God, could not refrain from crying out in a transport of joy and holy confidence, O oh, will of my God, how infinitely holy, just and adorable it is, and still more lovable and beneficent. If it be entirely accomplished in me, I shall infallibly find true satisfaction in this life and eternal happiness in the next. Infinite mercy could not permit anything which did not tend to the greatest, the greater good of his poor creatures. 
These only can be lost by the perversion, perversion of their own will, by the twisting of their own will, and by preventing the accomplishment of those designs which are always holy and most merciful. Give me then, O oh my God, the grace to destroy by complete detachment this foolish resistance, and henceforth be assured that your holy will shall be done in me, while I shall be equally assured of salvation and perfection." End quote of what he has heard other people saying. Letter three, peace in turmoil, okay? I didn't know why, I just felt like I wanted to wear a bright blue shirt today. And I don't know if people have used this sign for, for, for ill use, but I, to me, it just is peace. Can you see it? Yeah, peace. And so um, this chapter, this letter that we're reading right here is called Peace. Here's the ocean again. Let me see if we can get the ocean and I just felt like it, it, it was important to have a person. I didn't know why. And so I am such. Oh, I can't do it that way because the microphone's over here. So um, I think it'd be too far away. Peace and Turmoil. To Sister Marie Theresa de Voimenel. This is another nun um, that he was being a spiritual director to. Um, to be applied to herself, profound peace can be enjoyed in this abandonment, even amidst the bustle of biz business matters. Even when you're in the midst of business matters. I didn't know he was going to talk about this. I was bringing up business earlier. I, I'm thinking of a Flight of the Concord song, so <laughs> you got to excuse me for that. <laughs> so funny. About business. But anyway, I, I was married when I heard that song, but... Nevertheless, now um, it's an old. Okay, Perpignan, from Perpignan, I think that's where he is. Um, 1740, he wrote this. What I've always feared has come to pass. I have no power to refuse a charge that is contrary to all my predilections and for which I do not believe myself to have any aptitude. In vain have I groaned, prayed, and implored, and offered to remain all my life in the, vicari the vicariate of Toulouse. I have been compelled to make the sacrifice, one of the greatest of my whole life, but now I see plainly the hand of providence. The sacrifice having been made and reiterated a hundred times, God has taken from me all my former repugnance, so that I left the mother house, where he was before, which you know how much I loved, with a peace and liberty of spirit, which astonished even myself, right? This is not somewhere he wanted to go, but... Um, you know, because you can get into this rhythm of really helping people. I don't know if I get my channel anymore after today. I don't know that. He was showing me that. I don't know that. But I pray that these videos stay up and they, they get to minister to people. I, we don't know if our life will... will I mean, Elliot's ended 20, 21 years ago yesterday, as far as I know, unless he um, went into witness protection somehow. Like, I don't know. I've heard... Anyway... Um, not not about him. I've heard that about other people, but I won't go into that. When since I arrived at Perpignan, I found a large. Okay, so it says, when I arrived at Perpignan, I found a large amount of business to attend to, none of which I understood, and many people to see and to deal with. The bishop, the steward, the king's lieutenant, the parliament, the garrison staff. Right. So he. He was put in place of all these high people and he wanted to stay in his simple life from before. Like, I don't blame him, I understand, because you don't care about those things. I mean, you care, but God, he had to equip him to be able to speak soundly to these people. You can see that from this, you know, from um, from our book that we've just read in earlier in these videos. Um, you know what horror I have always entertained for visits of any sorts, and above all for those of grand people. Grand, we're grand, you know. We're all called to be kings and priests, so don't ever be intimidated by who you get set in front of, you know, because you, you carry the king, Christ, in you if you're a Christian, and I welcome you to be a Christian. A, B, C, 
that it's just the easiest ABC. You ask God to come into your heart. You believe that he died for your sins and you confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. I confess every hamartia, that's a word for sin in Greek. It's just every way I haven't been, I've missed the mark. You missed the mark of perfect love. Uh, take all of those ways from me and help me to walk in your ways and surrender my life to you and live for you and make me a new person and you know make me into a little Christ like C.S. Lewis writes about in mere Christianity and and lead me now on this path that's it huh, ABC always be Christ's uh, it's e e easy as ABC and that's how easy love can be. Aw, that's so sweet that God was giving us that song. That's how that song goes. That's how easy love can be. This is just love. We're just describing real love, true love. <sighs> uh, of grand people. Well, none of these have given me any alarm. In God, I hope to find a remedy for everything. And I feel a confidence in divine providence, which enables me to surmount all difficulties. Besides this, I enjoy peace and tranquility in the midst of a thousand cares and anxieties, such as I should have imagined ought naturally to overwhelm me. It is true that what most contributes to produce the, this great peace is that God has rendered my soul impervious to fear, and I desired nothing for, the short, for this short and miserable life, right? Oh, wow. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Therefore, when I have done all in my power or that I felt before God that I ought to do, I have the rest. I leave the rest to him, abandoning everything entirely and with my whole heart to divine providence, blessing him beforehand for all things and wishing in all and above all that his holy will may be done because I am convinced by faith and by numerous personal experiences that all comes from God and that he is so powerful and such a good father and that he will cause everything to prosper for the advantage of his dear children. Has he not proved that he loves us more than life itself since he has sacrificed his life for the love of us? something about Sarah. God, I pray for Sarah. And God, I pray for anyone watching this. <sighs> every single soul. You know every detail. You know every hair on our head. <sighs> Therefore, as he has done so much for love of us, are we not convinced that he will not forget us? Therefore, as he has done so much for love of us, right? He came here and faced death and surrendered himself. Jesus surrendered himself to the perfect will of God, you know, trusting him to resurrect him because he was, he was sinless, right? He died for our sins. He took our sins upon himself as a man and as God because he had to bring man back into the right in a just way. I don't know. It's a mystery. Anyway, calm. Christ Almighty loves me. That's therefore I can stay calm. I have that open in my journal at my house. I mean, there's so many things that could throw any of us off. Let's let's look at the ocean again. Let's I can put this over here. No, I don't want my face to be here. I just want I just want the face of nature. <laughs> Even though I am I'm part of that face. <sighs> Whatever you want, God. All right. I leave the rest to him, abandoning everything entirely with my whole heart to divine providence, blessing him beforehand. Thank you, God. We bless you that you are taking care of all of these things for us. Um, for all things and wishing and all and above all that his holy will may be done because I am convinced by faith and by numerous personal experiences that all comes from God and that he is so powerful and such a good father that he will cause everything to prosper for the advantage of his dear children. Has he not proved that he loves us more than life itself since he sacrificed his life for love of us? Therefore, as he has done so much for love of us, are we not convinced that he will not forget us? I entreat you then not to worry about me and my affairs. Do the same that I have constrained myself to do. Directly I have taken measures before God and according to his will, I leave all the rest to him and look to him for success. I wait for this success with confidence, but also in peace. 
and whatever takes place I accept, not for the satisfaction of my impatient desires, but keeping pace with divine providence, who rules and arranges all for our greater good, although generally we do not understand any of his ways. And how can we dare to judge him, poor ignorant creatures as we are, and blind as the moles that burrow underground? Let us accept all from the hand of our good Father, and he will keep us in peace in the midst of the greatest disasters of this world, which pass away like shadows. You have an eternal life. All of these disasters are like this, but God wants to save your eternal life, and the enemy wants to keep you, the enemy of our souls says the world, the flesh, and the devil are our enemies. That's how the church describes it. Wants to keep you ignorant that you have an eternal soul and wants to keep you chasing after things of this world. And those things pass away, but you have an eternal soul and you want that soul to be with God in heaven. And so we want to be doing his will here because that gives the message of eternity to more people through us. That's it. It's very simple. When you're yielded to these other things, they keep you in slavery. It said, St. Paul says that. Jesus says it in a different way. But St. Paul said, anyone who sins is a slave to sin. You're not free. You're slave to that thing. Let us, ex us ac accept all from the hand of our good Father, and he will keep us in peace in the midst of the greatest disasters of this world, which pass away like shadows. In proportion to our abandonment and confidence in God, will our lives be holy and tranquil. Also, where this abandonment is neglected, there can be no virtue nor any perfect rest. You are wrong in being surprised that I was not so at the views and plans of N. You know, they, they would do this. C.S. Lewis would do this too in letters. They would just put an initial to leave people private, their privacy. Um, for besides that, nothing surprises me in this life. You ought to know my way of always looking at the best side of things and setting everything in a favorable light. Oh, thank God, that's good. I wish I did that more. As St. Francis de Sales advises. I was quoting St. Francis de Sales in the, in the one reel I did this past week. He's the one that talked about the mule, the smelly mule that carries the king's gold. Is, 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 it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a beautiful horse a show horse or a mule, you know, we're still carrying the king's gold. That's our privilege and honor. As St. Francis of Sales advises, St. Francis of Sales, he's quoted him earlier saying, do everything with gentleness and meekness and, and humility. And I, I forget the exact quote. It's, maybe I put it in a post before, but it's on, a, uh, it's on my videos on forgiveness. It's in the posted and the penned comments. I think that's where I quote it. What it. Wherever I have repentance and forgiveness. Maybe if you look up hashtag forgiveness with my name. This fortunate habit protects me from danger and somehow makes it impossible for me to think badly, to judge harshly, or to speak uncharitably of anyone, whoever he or she may be. Right? I strongly advise you to adopt it. It will greatly contribute to the preservation of the peace of your soul and the purity of your conscience. Believe me and sacrifice all human feelings, consoling yourself for all by the abnegation and confidence in God alone, who alone can fill the place of all else. All right. So the next letter that we're not going to start because we're at the end. Well, it's called Liberty of Spirit. Oh, yeah, we have time for it. Okay, so we are going to start it. My dear sister... I am touched at your wish to share in my trials, but I am happy in being able to reassure you. It is true that at first I felt a keen pain at finding myself loaded with a multitude of bus business affairs and other cares quite contrary to my attraction for silence and solitude. But notice how divine providence has managed about it. God has given me the grace not to attach myself to any of these affairs. Therefore, my spirit is always at liberty. I recommend the success of them to his fatherly care. And this is why nothing distresses me. Things often go perfectly, and then I return thanks to God for it. But sometimes everything goes wrong, and I bless him for that equally and offer to him as a offer it to him as a sacrifice. Well, you know, use it as fertilizer, God, however you want to use it. Once this sacrifice is made, God puts everything right. Already this good master has more than once given me these pleasant surprises. As regards having time to myself, I have 
more here than elsewhere. Visits are rare now because I only go where duty obliges me or necessity calls me. The fathers themselves, knowing my tastes, soon left me alone as they are aware that I do not act in this way out of pride or misanth mis mis misanthropy. They do not take exception to my conduct, and indeed, many are edified by it. Nevertheless, I am not quite so dead as you seem to think, but God has given me grace not to care how discontented people are with me for following my own bent. You know, he would enter into a lot of silence, and people couldn't understand that. You know, someone was asking me the other day, didn't you see my Facebook post? And I'm like, no, I, I don't scroll through social media. I don't have time. I would never have time to do any of these videos if, if I did do that. But... You know, I love people nonetheless. Um, nevertheless, I am not quite so dead as you. Okay. Um, it is he alone whom we ought to have any great interest in pleasing. As long as he is satisfied, that is enough for us, for us all. Other things are mere nothing, a mere nothing. In a short time, we shall appear before this great and sovereign master, this infinite being. Alas, of what avail will it be to us then for eternity to have done anything except for him and inspired by his grace and his Holy Spirit. If one become more familiarized with those simple truths, what repose would not our hearts and souls enjoy during this present life? From how many idle fears, foolish desires, and useless anxieties should we not be delivered? Not only concerning this life, but also the next. I assure you that since my return to France, I begin to look forward more than ever with great peace and tranquility to the end of this sad life how could I experience aught but joy at seeing the end of my exile approaching? Wow. And so letter five, the next one that we're not going to read, is uh, recourse to providence. Okay, so let me um, fold this so we know where we are. And I'll fold this one too to point down to that. Hopefully I remember. Okay, I unfolded the others. It does look like we only have one session left. Let's see. Unless I print out more. I don't plan to print out more. No, I just got confirmation. So it looks like we have one more hour in this series, and I don't know what's next yet. I wish you so much love. Thanks for being here and sharing this hour with me. I wish you peace and um, God's success in everything, everything that he has you endeavor on this earth. Much love.